This is the final review video of the Chinese web drama Chuan Yue Huo Xian Crossfire. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Junkin Good Storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Chuan Yue Huo Xian has finished airing 36 episodes. I've watched them all. I've actually watched multiple times of multiple episodes, maybe not the whole thing, but um, I literally looped certain things. So I am here to talk about my final opinions about this drama. First, I'll maintain a two gold mine rating for this drama. From a very personal and emotional angle, I would probably rate it even higher. But I do recognize this drama is not perfect. It still has lots of problems that needs to be fixed. But in my heart, it is more than a two gold mine drama. And I really enjoying this drama. It is my summer's pleasure. It is this year's so far biggest surprise to me as a drama reviewer because I so didn't expect it to be what it is and I'm so happy when it finished with what I ended up with. So in this review, I'm gonna reverse the order. I'm gonna first talk about the things that stopped me from rating it to a three gold mine drama. I think many of the viewers of this drama, if you love this drama, you would also agree that these are problems. Then I'm gonna talk about the stuff that just made my tears wrong and my heart racing and my blood boiling and feeling so satisfied after watching the drama. The first big problem is I feel the two timelines are written with very uneven quality. The 2008 storyline led by Lu Han's role, Xiao Feng, is a stronger line with better plots, better developments, better pacing, better characters than the 2019 line that's led by Wu Lei's character, Lu Xiaobei. I'm not sure if it's written by the same person or actually two different persons or teams. The writing quality is just different. And I so wish the 2019 line can be written much better than the current version to equalize because I find fast forwarding the 2019 storyline many many times while I was watching this drama but not really wanting to do that to the 2008 storyline. Particularly there are some scenes in the 2019 line maybe due to some post-production things or censorship problems I don't know that they literally removed and then didn't manage to work on how to bridge that gap that's been basically dug by cutting a huge chunk of the plot out. If you go back and watch the 12 and 13 episodes, when the 2019 team led by Lu Xiaobei had the biggest quarrel, things just happened out of nowhere. People just suddenly started fighting and you don't know why. And then later something refers to that scene and clearly they haven't actually let you know all the information that's causing that big quarrel. And it feels super jarring when you hit that episode because this drama released the first 10 episodes in one go. Uh, if you are VIP of Tencent, you can watch the first 10 episodes. At the point when 10th episode ended, it was the first climax that was so good. So you are so hooked to this storytelling and you're waiting for the next episodes, next episodes. And the way they chuck out the future episodes are one episode per day. So you are not getting that huge chunk of information dumped on you at the same time feeling, you literally get spoon fed. But because the editing problem, it just suddenly got to the point where you're lost. You don't know what's going on. The 12, 13 episode is super bad. It just breaks the rhythm, breaks the pacing of the drama, almost made me just go tip over. It feels like you're driving and suddenly you hit something that you don't even know where it comes from. Later, it starts to get better. But still, I would say the drop down part of this drama is between its teen number episodes. And I think some people who are very picky probably got lost in that part, didn't wait till the later really exciting moments. When eventually the two timelines joins and become one in the 20s number episode, things start to pick up and become much more reasonable and much more exciting and worked much better. So in terms of the 36 episodes drama, it really had gone through very different stages of good, really good, exciting, what the heck? Mm, okay, getting better, getting better. Oh, that's exciting. You know, like there's so many stages of this drama. It's very uneven. It means the script it has not been worked on to the point it could be. It feels certain parts are still rushed, certain parts are still not ironed out, the details are not connecting. So that leads to me talk about the second major problem is there are a lot of plot holes 
Okay, a lot of because it's inevitable almost. If you have time travel, it naturally, intrinsically have plot holes because paradox happens. But that's not the most troublesome plot holes I see because I accept time travel stories will always have very clear plot holes that cannot be filled. You know the very common question about if you change the past, right? Who would still remember? Who would still have the two sets of memories? Do you have a rule about how that works in your particular version of story? When Lu Xiaobei goes to change the past of Chu Ge losing the necklace. Does she remember both versions? When he goes back to change Xiao Feng's fate so that An Lan, instead of having a dead boyfriend, now having a boyfriend who's been sleeping for 11 years, does she have both versions of the memories too? Who are the affected people? And how would that affect what they do? The drama just gives you no explanation because I guess it's just too complicated for them to explain that. And also it runs into the very classic problem. Had Lu Xiaobei managed to tell Xiao Feng to stop his brother in the time travel magic of their computer game, then Lu Xiaobei wouldn't on that day be waiting on the pavement, sitting in a wheelchair, looking at the marks disappearing from the road because that past has already been changed 11 years ago. It should be the moment he said something go back and change it. Then when he gets off the line, that mark has changed, right? It wouldn't be the next day he's waiting in the ring and looking at the mark being changed and a new mark being created because in the linear timeline, Lu Xiaobei is in. It already happened in the past. You see, like this type of thing will never be sufficiently explained. That's the natural problem with time travel. I wish they would at least put a little bit of effort into explaining things, but I guess it's a plot device. It's really not the focus of this drama. So I'm okay with this problem, but that does not mean the other plot holes are warranted because a lot of them are not time travel related at all. And you really have to willingly ignore the existence of them to buy into the story. If you're really picky at the logic of those things, then you cannot continue watching this drama because you would just feel the story is unbelievable. For example, Xiao Feng was in bed, right? He was in coma for 11 freaking years <laughs> and he can just wake up and then very soon like there's no process of him recovering like physical therapy any of that and he's walking and he's even playing football when that scene happened which is super sweet of him and Lu Xiaobei playing footballs or soccer and everyone in China on the live comment <laughs> is saying you two are funny one has been sitting in the chair for 12 years, another has been lying on the bed for 11 years, and now you're both very happily, very comfortably, no problem whatsoever playing soccer. How nice. I know, they're trying to push the plot forward, they're really trying to make the important thing happen, but realistically, Xiao Feng's role probably need half a year, a year's really difficult therapy to even be able to walk normally and move around. And there are probably other problems with his health. But I understand, <laughs> they have to move the story on and they cannot just have an e ear gap when things are just like in the midair and nothing goes on. So yeah, you have to accept that. <laughs> and also like, you know, like the sex, also just like, there's no way that it happens that soon. So that's one like very clear and very buggy thing. Also, Wang Kai can just leave his club. He had a contract. He couldn't just walk out like that, but he literally just like, I'm not gonna play with you guys. I'm gonna go back to my old teammates and ask for their forgiveness. And he did it. Done. <laughs> oh my God. That is just so realistic, right? There's nothing in the world called contracts. <laughs> and penalties and court cases and a million shitty things that you have to deal with before you can break free. Also, at a confrontation scene in the bathroom during the game between Lu Xiaobei and Xu Wei, they are wanting to have that intense moment of Lu Xiaobei confronting the most terrible person in this drama who destroyed his life and made him who he is, right? But when you think about it, there's no logic. First, Lu Xiaobei is a very smart boy, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be who he is. And this is just not a clever move for him to do at that stage. But what purpose does it serve to poke at the bear? Let the bear know that you know the bear's secret. It really does not serve your purpose in any way. It probably gives you more trouble and put yourself in more danger. What is the point, right? It doesn't serve any purpose for Lu Xiaobei. That is positive and good. I know they're doing it for dramatic tension, but <laughs> and I'm like, it's just a really stupid move. And obviously towards the last couple of episodes, the whole smashing of the hand and still get injections, get painkillers to play the game is 
so individual heroism thing that it just does not make sense because this is teamwork when you play this type of game it's international competition you are representing your country in reality there's no way that coach would let a team member who is so injured who definitely is impeded from playing the game properly to go on there doesn't matter if you're the captain the team leader it's sports right imagine any type of proper sports what kind of coach would allow like I don't care how close Xiao Feng and Lu Xiaobei are or how he respects his dream and this is so important because he has to beat the Japanese team and then blah 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 Okay, okay, yeah, 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 in the plot setting but <laughs> honestly if Xiao Feng is a responsible, clever, rational mind coach which is what he needs to be for his position in a national team there's just no way that he should and would allow Lu Xiaobei to compete with that smashed hand so these are the things and there are more okay many many more when you want to really dig at all those things in this drama that are unable to stand scrutinization but i forgive them because the good things about this drama is so good and it's rare i haven't seen it in chinese dramas ever since i started this channel on this particular subject of esports so let's talk about the good things some of the things you may have already noticed for sure some you may not have noticed so you know knowing a little bit extra information is always nice this drama did do a lot of research about gaming culture stuff it also did a lot of research about who are the people in chinese gaming world that had meant something in its history not just in the ending sequence that you see at the end of episode 36 showing all the pictures of those people and paying respect to them there are cameos in this drama game players who just show up for one thing who are real players who have made very important progress for China's esports in history and Xiao Feng's character had references to real people who had similar names who had completed similar things in their career it also includes references to real gaming people such as in episode 9 when they were eating instant noodles and then grabbing the curtain to wipe their mouth it's literally playing this meme that actually happened during a live stream of a gamer playing CSGO who is very well known on China's internet called Chiezi. he was eating noodles and then he grabbed his curtain and wiped his mouth and many people within the gaming community knows about this so when that scene showed up people are like we're so appreciative of this drama's makers spending time researching about the history the people what has happened in China in the esport world after I watched it for the first time when I went back to look at this drama I did notice a lot more details that are not captured the first time around for example in an earlier episode when Xiao Feng and Anlan were having this chat on their balcony on the top of their building and they were locked out because wind slammed the door shut and they couldn't get help so they were just sitting and waiting there this is life deal with it selfie then in a later scene when they're having another conversation in the sunlight on that rooftop there's this plastic bucket <laughs> that has water in it and it's standing there as a door stopper to stop it from ever happening again it's just in the shot the characters are not referring to it in any way and if you're not you know observant you don't see that so this drama has many many of such details that really shows they put a lot of effort into creating that world and creating that timeline and narrative and making it logical and when i capture those little details i feel really happy i feel this is a crew who cares about their story who have put a lot of work into it it's not perfect it still has many problems but at the places they can manage to do well they did and then we have to say the most successful thing about this drama is it gives us such a great ensemble of characters and through them we get the essence of this drama this message this very hot-blooded it's very hopeful it's very fight for your dream even if the world does not recognize its importance you have to continue and if you keep at it you can make it that very positive message that the entire drama sends you and they very cleverly very successfully let that message get to its audience at the same time give us so many beautiful characters to look at the 2018 the actors are so good when you think about each and every one of them the major anti-hero played by Liu Shuiliang Xu Wei very good actor pinpoint accuracy of this character's 
journey of how he got to the point, what he was like before it happened. There are merits about this person. There are things that you appreciate about him, but then his journey of becoming what he is at the end is a very well played out, very convincing line. The Lao Sha character, oh, such a good actor. I totally didn't expect I'd walk away with this drama and having such a strong impression of this actor. He's definitely not a good looking guy in the traditional sense. He never is gonna play a leading role in a romantic idol drama. But oh my God, this guy, this actor is just gold. You can see the clear differences when he first got out of that crazy concentration camp-like place, he's mentally disturbed, till later he become more settled and normal, and he has a particular way of speaking that is clearly the actor's work, to the later, 11 years later, when he becomes a much more normalized person and has a career and a life of his own, that clear change and at each stage how accurately this actor portrays and he's just a genius of comedy and also of just dramatic acting. Also the actor who plays Qi Ling, although that role at certain stages I think is due to the writing's problem, is not 100% convincing, particularly the part when he broke away from uh, one coin because he's trying to take Lao Sha's girlfriend. That is very abrupt and it's totally written for the purpose that later he'll come back and they would have this emotional scene. Does not quite make sense for this role to do that. But apart from that, this role later in the story, it just has such strong contrast. But the actor sells the younger version of this role and the later version, the older, the more mature, the more responsible version of this role, also so convincingly. The Hold's monkey character, the Amin, they have like lesser really a uh, weight to the storytelling, but they are both also so convincing. You can totally picture these people as these people in reality in the 2008 plotline and later 2019 being who they say they are. And can we say when they re reunite in episode 32, who would not cry? I cried so many times during the 32 to 33 episodes because of all the coming back of Lu Xiaobei and Xiao Feng finally meet in reality and embracing, of Xiao Feng getting back to his old teammates and having that drink and that barbecue. <laughs> oh my god. And then finally reuniting with Anlan. And can we agree? At the beginning of episode 33, that kissing is just the best I've seen from Chinese Drama Land 2020. It's so beautiful so well played out and it's so warranted at that point of the plot line. Thank heavens for an editor director. It's a music video <laughs> at that moment with Lu Han's Time Stops the song with these two actors kissing so convincingly and with all the flashbacks of their past histories edited in together. That's a long kiss but oh my god like I've re-watched that like 10 times and I, I'm so happy to see that. I really haven't seen anything like that from Chinese Romulan for a long time. Either it's just not selling it because the story hasn't gotten to the point where the characters should have such strong reactions to each other, or it's just been filmed or edited in very hmm way. But for this drama, that kissing is gonna end up on my top 10 Chinese drama kissing scene ever. The 2019 line relatively weaker, but I still appreciate the characters in that drama. I like Chen Hao being such a good friend to Lu Xiaobei from the beginning till the end. He's like the best friend you can have, really. If you have a friend like that, you should be so appreciative in your life. He's so loyal, so kind, so gentle, always trying to, you know, even out the problems. And then he's rich, who <laughs> can back you up, back your dream up. The Wang Kai and Su Jiayi couple went through a couple of ups and downs in their uh, relationship, but they're cute. Like at times, it's super cute, their relationship. Su Jiayi is... So oh, who wouldn't like a girl who's just that cool, who's good at gaming, who's so sassy and beautiful cosplayer. And also King, he showed up in the beginning, very beginning of the story and kind of just disappeared. And he showed up later in the very late stage of the drama and then become a member of the continue team. But this young actor is first very good looking, a great voice, and he sells his role so well. Like I totally believe a game player. As the story sets him up, although he's a very minor character to the story, I have a strong impression of him. I would definitely look out for this actor for his future work. In terms of the two romantic main relationship between Xiao Feng and Anlan and between Lu Xiaobei and 
楚歌 I think both lines are very convincing and written well. The 2008 line, because of the nature of the storytelling, is definitely much more attention grabbing, heart wrenching, beautiful. The 2019 line is normal, like a very normal, slowly building young people's romantic relationship, but it's good enough. I'm happy with those two romantic relationships and I'm happy with those two uh, female characters, the way they're written and the way that the actresses portray them. And finally, we do have to say this is a drama that is about the two guys. That's the center of the narrative about Xiao Feng played by Lu Han and about Lu Xiaobei played by Wu Lei. And I'm so happy that these two actors got these two roles and they really have done a very good job. I am so happy. This is so not expected. If last year, 2019, you tell me, next year, Lu Han and Wu Lei is going to lead a eSport gaming drama and you're gonna love it. I would never believe you. I would say you're joking, no way. Yet, 2020 has proven to be a year where everything you didn't expect just comes true so naturally, so straightforwardly, and so in your face. <laughs> We've all seen that, including this drama. And this kind of makes me even happier because I love to be surprised and I love to be slammed in the face by reality and saying you were wrong. Look at me now. What your judgment is, what your opinion about this and that was outdated. Now this is the reality. Deal with it. And I'm like, yes, I love that. Hmm. Somehow that sounds really SM. Anyway, I am being honest. I am so happy that I got into this drama. Somehow, if you still haven't seen the drama and you're watching this video and you got to this point, it's weird, but you should go and watch this drama. I'll leave the information I know about where to find this drama in the description. Highly recommend everyone who comes across this review video, go and check out Crossfire, 穿越火线. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.